Remember these things? Yeah, these things that people said uh, it was a bad idea, it wouldn't work, they wouldn't sell, they were dangerous. 100,000 units later, they're still selling. But here's the crazy thing. I think I just found a way to make these things even better. All right, so here's the thing about these. The cool thing about this was that it would allow people that were new into batteries to make a battery really quick, right? Because all you have to do is just load them up in here and then you would stack them into giant stacks like this and you can build a little battery pack or a big giant 20 amp power battery like this one, right? And so that was the cool thing. But the bad thing about these is that, well, they were kind of expensive. These holders are really expensive. You know, once you start adding everything, you're like, as prices of batteries drop, then this even became more and more expensive because everything in the world is costing more, right? And so this almost costs as much as the battery that you can get. Now for first time battery builders and stuff, these are great because then it kind of takes all the guessing work out of it, but it does have a few limitations. Like for example, these were limited to being stuff for like one C. The holders here are the weak link. These springs right here, they get hot at five amps, right? So that means that this whole board is limited to about five amps. You can get close to like 3.5 amp hour cells right so just slightly more than 1c so i always said that this was rated at 1c if you can build a 20 kilowatt hour battery using these well you can get about 20 kilowatt out of it right 1c and for storage this is great but people are always asking can i use these on like a power application like an e-bike or a scooter or a thing and it was always like no an application where it's not stationary we don't know how the vibrations uh, will affect the little springs here get hot at five and so here's what we're doing because we have a bunch of these boston sonata cells started loading these up here and then we started selling these boards already pre-made and the problem is that it was kind of expensive. It was like $50 for each one of these little boards, right? And so even though it was expensive, people were buying them. But then I thought, if we're making the, the modules already populated with cells, couldn't we just get rid of the most expensive thing? So what I did was did an experiment where I just spot welded the cells directly into the board. And guess what? That lowers the cost by a lot and hopefully it's gonna remove the five amp limitation that these have maybe i'm gonna test right now this is this is what this setup is here i'm gonna load these up and they have a 15 amp fuse right so that means the board we can push the board up to 15 amps and then we have the thermal camera and then we're gonna check to see how hot these spot welds get right into the board and stuff and then we'll, we'll see what we can rate them. But maybe we can rate them at 2C, maybe we can rate them at 3C. And now because this is a much better secure connection with the spot welds, we could even uh, probably start uh, using these for mobility applications where there are you know vibrations and stuff like that, right? And high power applications. So let's test this. We have this plugged in through our meter here. This is gonna measure the amps. Uh, this one right here is gonna measure the, uh, well, the individual cell voltages. There's uh, seven cells, right? Cause it's a 24 volt pack. And then we have our 24 volt inverter right here that we're gonna load up into a heater and then we'll be able to adjust the power. All right, so here's the setup. These uh, four boards here, modules, right? Are built the same way. They have the uh, spot welded nickel strips in there. The only difference is that these are covered with this um, shrink wrap thing and then the top one is not so that we can check to see what the difference is in, in the temperature is from a fully exposed one to the one that's covered in here. So of course this has been going through this and then we're gonna just turn on the load and then we'll start seeing how they heat up. I'm gonna turn on thermal camera and these might seem like they're a bit warm and the reason why that is, it's because, it's because we, I just charged them. They were at nominal and then I just wanted to charge them so that they were fully charged so when we started the test.
All right, I'm calling it 2C maximum, right? The half hour in, about 39% of the pack left. Uh, the cells are, yeah, about three. They're sagging a bit too much. They're getting a bit too hot, about 53 degrees centigrade. Um, so, yeah, basically this particular module with those cells the way that it's built yes it's it's, uh, it's going to be 2c which is going to be it's better than those other modules over there that have the holders this was a 1c max right and then that's a 2c so it is an improvement and that this is limitations of the cells now so these are going to be available on our website we're gonna make these this way they're gonna be shrink wrapped and all you have to do is put them together and it's gonna be super simple and easy for you guys to build a battery pack using these like that and of course you'll be able to use this at 24 or also pair them uh, in series uh, make towers you know equal towers and connect them in series and then you'll be able to do 48 volts that way an improvement on the old design look for these on our website uh, and they're gonna be cheaper and you're gonna be able to get more battery because these are bigger than what we used to sell with the uh, 18650s. After further review of the data here of the thermal imaging and stuff, I'm going to say that these are good for one and a half C continuous, two C max. And the reason is not because of the boards, it's not because of the nickel strips, it's because of the cells. The cells are got hot uh, at two C continuous, right? At around 40% uh, of their cycle. Yeah, they were they were hot, and that worries me that they're gonna vent or whatever, right? So turns out these cells are not that powerful now if you were using some other types of cells like maybe the swing okay now these ones will be able to push more maybe two two and a half seats right but these ones in particular here the sonatas yeah they're not they're not able to push more than you know one and a half seat continuous uh and as the sh test shows so on these modules when we list them on our website they're gonna have that information one and a half c continuous 2c max right so when you use 2c just make sure uh you don't do it on a continuous basis right just bursts because then the cells are going to get too hot and they might then obviously this ones are compatible with all the bms and the state of charge boards that we make right but uh remember our uh bms's that we use for these little systems they're they don't have a temperature probe so if you want to do that then you would have to use another BMS. There's some, a lot of BMSs out in the market that have temperature control or temperature sensors. And so I would suggest using that if you're gonna push these hard. But if you're gonna be using them for storage, like at one C, uh, one and a half Cs, you shouldn't need any of that stuff, right? So, all right, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.